Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is doing well. Let me just make sure everything is good on this end. I know I'm a minute or two late today, not my norm, but it's been one of those days. I've been busy as all heck can be. Today's topic is going to be fourth quarter. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I don't see anybody saying they can't, so I'm assuming you can. Um, sounds good. Thanks, Matt Jake. Um, <clears throat> News-wise, I did get a message from Whatnot that they added in media shipping to there. And then I got a personal message from somebody from there as well directly about that because I complained about media mail. So I don't know if complaints had something to do with it. I still haven't done but four Whatnots. It's been a very long time since I've done one months. Um, we are trying to liquidate some merchandise, so I may or may not do a couple more now that they have media. Um, I've got thousands of records we were trying to just get rid of. <clears throat> I know I had given some away for some prizes, and I know one person alone made like $600 off the, the box that I uh, gave them. So I, I know there's value in that, and they hadn't even sold all of them. But um, anyway, that's the only real big news. Now, sales-wise, let's go right into sales for a minute here. Um, I don't have anything to compare it to from last year because last year... The beginning of October, October 12th of last year, they did the update. Now, this year, they did another update as well. I've had a lot of people tell me the same basic principles happened. Sales are down. Things aren't going like they were the prior year. Now, comparing it to the prior year from um, uh, 2019, 2020, they were a little lower than... I shouldn't say lower than they were still up a hair from from prior years, but sales overall in October weren't anywhere near as good as they had been like they would be in November, December. So I'm not going to worry at all. And I personally, if you've got enough items up, you're doing the right thing. You're working your store. You're constantly doing action on your account. You're listing new items, good items, not just junk. I would say you're still going to have some decent sales. Now, I sell vintage and collectibles. So the market for the items that I sell is very solid. Um, I've got routine customers. I've got people that buy from me constantly over and over and over and over again. So my business rides on a large chunk of just repeat business. I know everybody doesn't do that, but if you're in certain categories that you're going to keep being in, that you're going to stay in for a length of time, you're going to get repeat business. It's not like a clothing person that buying from you that you just happen to have a pair of jeans that, that first, they fit them. Second, they were in good enough condition for them. Third, it was cheap enough. And fourth, they liked that style of jeans. Now, if somebody's buying a trade card, they know what they want. All those four points for a piece of clothing, any piece of clothing, are gone because they want it. They already know they want it. They're not randomly looking for something. The other aspect I would say with what I sell, I can't promise what everybody else sells, but with what I sell, 99% of what people buy from me is from expendable income. doesn't matter if the economy is going bad or not. Most people who buy from me, not all of them, there's some I'm sure are financially not as stable, but most people that buy from me have extra money. So when, you know, they might even be retired and still not have to worry about it. A lot of the items that I sell are sold to probably people that are older than I am. And, um, you know, so there, there's a different demographic for what I personally sell for the most part, the, the vast majority, especially what I share with everybody on my eBay store there. Um, you know, fourth quarter is a make it or break it. If you don't make it in fourth quarter, you're not making any money in fourth quarter. The rest of the year, hang on, I got posties everywhere. I needed to move them because I knocked them down. Sorry, I'm a little disorganized today. I put in a different mount, camera mount, for the show. Um, it's a 360. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but it, it's a, a different one than I usually use, and I might just continue with this one. So, Anyway, nothing to do with the show, but back to fourth quarter in general. So if, if you don't make it during fourth quarter... The, the the prognosis for summer and for other times of the year won't bode well for your business. And I'm not trying to be doom and gloom or scare anybody. I'm just giving you the factual information. A toy store, to, like Toys R Us before they kind of went under. Um, Toys R Us made up to 75% of all of their revenue in third quarter for Christmas. 
That might be 75, three out of four sales they have all year round happen in only a two or three month time span for some businesses. So that's why it's a make it or break it uh, venue for most people. This last quarter here, last three months out of the year. If you don't know what a quarter is, every three months of the year, starting with January, is the quarter. January starts quarter one, February, March. April starts quarter two, and so on and so on. October starts quarter four. So, and that's a financial way to break down your business into a three month, a little more easily uh, digestible grouping of information if you do it that way. Now, I do it monthly too, and I turn in my quarterly reports for financials to for tax purposes we pay taxes in advance prior to the end of the year so come the end of the year i don't owe anything in taxes is your what you want i rather have money owed back to me because i overpaid a little bit than oh because there'll possibly be a penalty on it because you're self-employed and you should have something set up you can pay on a quarterly basis or you can pay you know a lump sum prior to the end of the year is the biggest gist on that but anyway <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been yapping on the phone all day with people. A um, lot going on here that I can't really talk about at this point, but we have we do have a few things going on that might be a little surprising. Um, Artie Mike, how are you doing? I may have lost some of the first comments. Um, once I've talked or the comments have been left for a certain amount of time, I can't see them at all. Purple Rain, good evening to you as well. Nice to have you on, of course. Ralph Funk. Seems like fourth quarter snuck up on us this year with all the stuff going on in the world. Yes, most definitely so. Um, normally, I've done a lot more work by this point getting ready for fourth quarter, but we've just, I've been inundated with stuff and purchases and things like that. We buy in the summer months most everything. I almost never try to buy any massive amounts in the winter because they're usually uh, more. The cost is sometimes 20, 30% higher in, it could even be 50% higher in winter months because there's less of it around and more competition. So the prices, if around here, local auctions like the antique auctions that I've been to many times, the prices are higher in the winter, always, every single time. There'll be far more people there on top of it. So in the summer months, there's more auctions, so there's not as many people, and they might be sourcing at estate sales and stuff. So there's not much competition for a few of the local auctions. I've been to local auctions around here where there was four people bidding on stuff, counting me. And it was just uh, free for all. Everything was dirt cheap. There's only a few like that, but there are some around here that are like that. So it's summer. It's summer summer auctions. So I buy it all in in the summer, everything I can. And we've pretty much tried to cut off purchasing. My last big purchase was $5,000 uh, investment into a huge paper assortment. I mean, like 15, 20,000 pieces of quality. Not all quality, but there are mostly stuff that's at least sellable in lots or something. It's a lot of money. So there's some cards that might get me one-fifth of that each, one single card. So it's 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 a a game you have to know what you're doing i would never spend five thousand if i if i would have thought 15 years even 10 years ago that i'd be sinking five thousand dollars and it's it's extra money for me it's not a big ordeal into something i'd, I'd think i was crazy thinking that i would ever want to do that or be comfortable or even have the money because 10 years ago i would have never had the money to do that so you know i would have you know there's no way so things have changed, thank goodness. But it's all taken a ton of time. I work 12, 14-hour days usually. Um, I was up at 6 this morning. And I will probably be up till almost 1 tonight because I've got, we've got a big push going on something in the background here. I have Christmas artwork coming out. I'll just give that away. Um, I've been sp spending some time. The wife's got a kid's book that we are finalizing. I'm doing the illustrations, the final illustrations. So tentatively, not this Christmas, but next Christmas, we hope to have that ready. Um, for those, uh, let me just throw out a few updates on a few things because I get, get comments a lot. Yes, I am still going to do a Weeble video. I've probably had a dozen people this month, well, in the last 30 days, ask that. Marty, uh, Jimmy Flippet here is probably going to do some music for that. Um, great guy. I've just... I've had to put a lot of my pet projects, I will call any Weeble video, because I don't really make anything. It's just a, a time drain to some extent. I've had to put all my 
my play stuff aside, I guess I would say anything that's not making revenue because we've just we've got so much stuff coming in and, and going out and little down and employees with, you know, everybody's graduated college pretty much other than one. And so things have swapped around here. So it's been getting busier and busier for me. But uh, we've got some things figured out, worked out. So things have have studied off pretty good. Uh, we had some uh, sick folks here, too, as well. But I do have some Christmas stuff. My guide, Picker's Guide for Smalls, I'm going to post a page, one single page, completed page, on my Patreon. And it'll probably be another one on the YouTube membership page as well to show you what it's going to be. And I think that will step it apart from all those just cutting and pasting off of eBay links and po and videos for their, you know, bolo lists and stuff. This is a true full-fledged researched data-driven uh guide that will help you ID price most of what I sell, to be honest with you with you. That's what it's going to mostly be. Military's in there, buttons and there'll be a few stamp things and stuff like that. Like always look for things that are on the top of my list and things. Um, as of now, it's 246 pages. Uh, it's not a big one. It's about the size of Albert's Uniform Button Book, but uh, size-wise, if you know what that is. So FYI, it's not going to be a course book. It's literally going to be an identification um, guide for those pickers like, like us. Um, it's got years' worth of my research and years' worth of me doing this uh, in that Um uh, the, the page I'm going to show is going to show like 25 things that are that look identical to the naked eye. And it'll be, in fact, it's not, I say one page. It's actually one sheet. It'll be two pages. The, the, the one page will show the graphics. The, the other side will uh, show the other half of the graphics. And then you'll have an explanation on there. So anyway, uh, that'll be up in, in uh, probably another week or two. We do have a printer. I do have a printer, a publishing company, uh, that's actually showed some interest, as I said, and we've been going back and forth on that. Um, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. I, mean, I don't want to put something out that's, pardon me, half-assed or there's mistakes or it's not as professional as, as it could be. Having a publisher behind it is it's a big step for us, and, and it'll be the first, hopefully, We've got kids' books that we've been working on long before I ever did YouTube. It has nothing to do with, you know, anything like that. It's always been a dream of the wife and I's to have them out. We've got a couple that are in the works. So um, I, I get questions on this. I'm not trying to push out a brag or uh, I'm just answering questions that, that are hit up on. I've been hit up on the guide for a while here. I've had one. I've been in the works for just records, the Record Picker's Guide. And again, that's, it's, it's mostly going to be pictures with identification, what to look for, and prices. I've, I've posted a few rough pages of it in the past before, but the, the, the problem is the, the record collecting industry are clicks. And if you're not in their group, they're never going to help you do anything. And some of the labels I very rarely run into, and I don't go out and source very much, so I'm not going to steal someone else's images, so I'm still fighting trying to get permission the guide my picker's guide of smalls everything in there is from my, my personal collections so everything pictured and there's a lot of value pictured in there is, is stuff that i own so no one can ever come after us for my guidebook there records is a different story i don't keep if i get a rare disc i sell it you know especially the 78s like the globe discs look up globe and brass grommet um, or just Globe and Brass 78 on either uh, Pop Psych or maybe there'll be some on eBay. But we've sold some just random discs from the Globe label for hundreds if not thousands. So you'll know what I mean. I can't afford to hang on to those. I can't afford to hang on to um, a Johnson or Early Blues or stuff like that. I mean, I can afford to. I don't want to. I don't want to break record. 78s are fragile. I've broken my share of them before I ever got them listed. And I don't... I list them, if it's a good record, it's listed quick or sold locally or sold to, I, I put out a list once in a while of rare records that we have, and I have people that buy straight from us, just FYI. I, there's mailing lists, that there's companies that do that. Craig's, Craig Moyer does that. He's a big, huge record site. He's got the rarest of the rare, and anyway, tough teller. So there's people out there that do that. I know I'm rambling. Uh, Matt Jake, welcome, welcome, welcome. Jackie Jack Enterprises. Our dog's name is Jack, and we, we always refer to him as Jackie. 
Come here, Jackie. He's he's just a riot. Um, Leland Langford, welcome, welcome. Clearwater, Florida. We I used to love going to Clearwater. We'd go to uh, Longboat Key, uh, Kikino Beach. The sand was was so white when the wind blew. Sometimes it reminded me of being up north in the snow. You could pick up sand. I don't know what it is like these days, but you could pick up sand, alive uh, anemones and sand dollars, and dolphin would swim out there. Honeymoon Island we'd go out to, if, if you know where that is. I lived in Florida for, geez, 12 years or something like that. Loved living there. We worked at Disney for 10, if you didn't know that. Um, Justin Bouchaw, how are you doing? Maine. I've been through Maine, too. I spent some time. I worked in Saugus area. Um, we stayed in Peabody up in Mass. Um, Gloucester, I went whale watching. up. Lovely, lovely. I mean, it was awesome. The wife and I loved it. That One of my wife's... Um, this is just a random conversation today. We'll, we'll be back and forth on fourth quarter. One of my wife's like bucket list was to go whale watching. And um, I, my boss asked if I'd fill in. I was a, a general manager at the time. He asked if I'd fill in up in the, the facility up in in uh, Saugus area, Boston, technically. but um, So we went up there. We actually stayed for two nights in the House of Seven Gables, which was a bed and breakfast back in those days. I don't know if it is still, but... And then we went whale watching off Gloucester, and we the Gortons, the bronze statue was right out there, right on the water, and lovely time up there. We went to the state forest right outside of Saugus, and it was just, it was an incredible trip. The, the mountains, uh, the hills, the big giant boulders and rocks, all it was really neat. We went to Webster, or not Webster's, um, what the heck is, uh, Brimfields. We did Brimfields. I actually flew in early just to do Brimfields up there. We bought so much stuff, I mailed back. Jeez, I don't know how many boxes we mailed back. We hit the limit on the airplane, uh, and then everything else had to be mailed. I was hoping my boss would help me out, but he wasn't allowed, so anyway. Black Crystal Dice, how you doing? Good to see you in. Thanks, Artie, Mike, and Matt, Jake, as well, for the sound. Top the flip. Good to have you in. Sounds like a first time. Hey, Joe, how are you doing, Joe? Good to see you in-house as well. Some for 5, 19, 18, my sales were eh, decent, but they dropped off the cliff. I'm, again, thinking that some of eBay's movements and changes they did around the beginning of the month may have some play in it. Obviously, last year it was the 12th, so... I can't strapulate a, a, a good sales total for this month at all, unfortunately, based on that. And then COVID the, the year before. So between those two, I'm looking at, you know, two and a half year old data, well, two year, two month old data, basically. And it's not going to be adequate for this month. Next month, I'm all fine. So, I mean, I'll, I'll be able to level off and I'll give everybody... Uh, the, my personal recommendations, what I see, we'll talk about sales after I get the end of this month in because at the 28th of October of last year, I started to do end and sell similar and figured out which what we're going to do, what seemed to work. We tested it for a couple weeks after the 12th. And anyway, sales totally went back to normal and we haven't had a problem really since. So I think with all the issues, recession, the home prices. Okay, so let, let's let's talk about home prices for a minute here. And I know, what what the heck does that have to do with you? Well, it has a lot to do with anybody who resells. And why? Because if you're on an adjustable rate mortgage and your mortgage goes up from around 2.8, 2.9 or wherever it was prior to that. I know it, it was under three for a little while. It went to 3.1 and then it's seven. And there, I think they were going to raise it to 7.2 or somewhere in that range, a quarter percent or something, 7.25. Some people may be paying hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the size of their mortgage and the size of their house, extra a month because if, if it's a, a adjustable rate, it depends on when the adjustments kick in. Um, and even if they don't kick in yet, the, these folks will know it's coming. Again, there's depends on your mortgage and all that stuff. I don't know how many folks out there have had a mortgage or anything else like that, but we've been through the process and I pay attention. We were I've talked about it. We've been looking for property. Well, with the economy and everything going, we're, we're fine to, to wait um, because our money will go farther. So we're around here. One of the places we looked at dropped $14,000 in 30 days. Fourteen thousand dollars off, and this is a, a three. It's on three acres, and it's it has a big. I can drive a semi up into one of the buildings on the property. Um, wouldn't it, it'd be tight, but I could do it. And it's a huge. I'd have a studio, and there'd be a secondary building, and plus the big, huge. 
I could park 10 cars in the building easily and still have more room and just the, the area I'd have for a studio. So the prices are dropping drastically right now. So, it, it, again, that has play into how much people have extra money, how much extra money they're going to have. Food prices are up. I know gas prices are fluctuating. We're still under $4 here. They dropped. I use Kroger's, so I usually pay 60 70 cents less a gallon when we fill up usually. So I think last fill-up was three twenty-six. dollars uh, here. I can't say what it is everybody else, but that's with my Kroger's card and, you know, anyway. Hang on, what do we got here? Bill Tyrell, well, thank you very kindly. I honestly and sincerely appreciate the 999 Super Chat. Because of your advice about listing and pricing and just your knowledge in general, it really helped my sales so far the second half of this year. Well, thank you very kindly. I appreciate that. I would hate to give out information that would harm anybody. Um, I use, you know, as empirical evidence as I can get for anything that I do. And thank you. Thank you kindly that with that, Bill. Not necessary, but I do appreciate that. Um, if it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to tell anybody. If I don't use something, I don't promote it. I don't talk about it. I don't, I don't do sports. The only sports I do are vintage tobacco-related cards because I know enough about those. Any day of the week, I can tell a fake. There's more fake uh, trade cards, Victorian tobacco trade cards, than there are real ones probably even at this point, but or trimmed ones. Uh, I'm always careful on trimmed cards if they're value, but we've sold tobacco cards into the thousands, each each card, and many other cards into the thousands, so I'm very cautious on, on stuff like that, but like I, I'm not trying to dog on the list perfectly, but I, I've been asked hundreds and hundreds of times, maybe a thousand plus times, and why don't I use it, you should use it, and blah, blah, blah. It doesn't do, it doesn't sink. Anything that doesn't sink, I'm not going to try and use ever. So if I'm not going to use it, I'm not going to tell everybody to use it. I know I could make $1,000 extra a month by commissions from pushing stuff like that. I'm not begrudging them their fees and stuff because I've done, I did one with HIP. That's the only one I've ever done on a promotional advertisement with anything ever on history on, on YouTube. And I use HIP still. I still use it. I know I've been hearing people say that everybody dropped it after some, their, they had a little issue there after eBay's update. Well, I, I don't have an issue. It's, it sinks, and if I ever have an issue, I just email tech support, and they fixed it within, geez, 18 hours last time, and it was on a weekend, so I was very happy with the, that on it. I, I don't begrudge them. It's, it's hit or miss on sales, but we've made a lot of money on, on there. I've, I've thousands of dollars off of HIP, to be honest with you. No exaggeration. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of items on there. As I, somebody I know and, and talked to just did $1,000 on HIP last month alone, Stamp sellers do quite a quite a bit uh, quite a bit on hip stamp as well. It might rival eBay from last I heard from some folks I know fairly decently. Um, let's pop on down here. Uh, let's see where are we at. Hey Don Don Wright, welcome. Good to see you in the house. Busy girl as well. Thank you. Nice patriotic border there or uh, emoji or whatever you'd want to call the avatar. I guess would be the correct term. Biff Bofo, how are you doing? I've noticed this October reflecting last October, even though I had a pretty fair summer. I can't complain about the summer, honestly. I did better this summer by up to 43% over last summer, in all honesty. And last summer was fine. I didn't have any real complaints with last summer. Now, if you only do eBay and nothing else, you maybe have an issue, is, is one thing I would say. Most people that I know that are doing better... Are, are having multiple sources of, of revenue, many revenue streams. I mean, I do, I do models. I put together, I, I hand paint stuff. I do postcard artwork. We, we got books on the, on the, in the back burner we've been working on. on a, I've got an animated short. It'll be eventually a 20 minute short that we've been working on for years. Not years, maybe a year and a half. And I got probably $5,000 invested into just labor, paying people to help out with that. That's a long-term investment. I don't mind doing stuff like that. Um, but you got to have more than just one revenue stream. So if one stream starts to slack off, like if you just sell on eBay, and eBay does something stupid and changes stuff so you're not getting any views or whatever whatever stupid glitch they got going on now, um, what are you going to do? So we've diversified you know, as, as much as we can humanly possibly do. Um, I write for e-commerce bites on top of it. I, I didn't seek that out. She actually reached out to me years, a couple years ago, and 
anyway i've got i posted a uh if you go to my community tab here on patreon or it's it's in my on my youtube groups as well or my facebook groups there's um her interview with one of the local uh pbs channels in the boston area uh that i i shared as well so you can get to semi meet ina and david and please watch it if you haven't because uh, you could see the anguish from Though it was basically a horror story the, these this couple had to deal with. And I know I, I directly talk to and chat with, with Ina, but she's just a wonderful person. And, and I'm not just saying that because I work with her, but I've never even had any sense from even... I, I, I can see into her writing and stuff. I can see who she who she is. And I've, I've talked to her enough that I, I would trust her without a doubt in any way, shape, or form. So... Anyway, please watch it. You get to meet her husband's in there too. He's 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 distraught, and you can hear some of the the horrific things. And this is so mild compared to the the case itself. There's some records you can see online. I'm not gonna push that issue, but I've talked to her about it as well and, and stuff too. So uh, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Um, we've broached those topics uh, privately on a couple of occasions. So anyway, very nice couple never deserved anything and you can see what they're after there's a lawsuit going against the last ceo it's going against a whole bunch of people personally his he's named in it you know and and there's enough internal documents that were never released so they're going to get discovery on this ina and david are going to get discovery on the case they couldn't get that in the any of the criminal charges because so far everybody has pled guilty Every but five down, two more to go. Everybody has pled guilty in that case to federal crimes. One's gone away, I think, for five years in federal prison, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I saw, I, I read it, but I didn't remember. I don't remember it, specific individuals. But one was the head of global security for all of eBay. He was one of the instigators that I guess flew across the globe, across the country, to follow and put a tracking device on Ian David's vehicle. These are eBay employees, three of them that flew there to do this and harass them and spy on them and tried to track them. And they practiced putting this on in the parking lot at eBay, apparently, from what I read in California. So, I mean, it, it's just an awful story. I don't mean to bring that up and I'm not trying to push anything out there. But, you know, that's that's that hit home because we were attacked as well. I've said this before at the exact same time because I had an article on Ina's site, on Ina's blog post, you know, I'd never hold her to accountable to anything like that because she just didn't. She was very nice, and I feel privileged for uh, writing for her to begin with. To be honest with you, I need to actually email her about next article. Honestly, um, there's Marty right there, Jiminy Flippet, YouTuber as well. So I would honestly recommend checking Marty out. Marty does a lot with print ads as well. Um, I love print ads. I don't do f anywhere near as many as he does with it. Um, I, I, again, I probably would if I didn't have the access to a lot of the other stuff that I get here. I just love the trade cards. We've got a Victorian coloring book that's in the works right now, too. Um, and I've talked about semi what, what the process is in, in my Patreon group. And I'll probably share that probably with the, the YouTube membership as well. But, um, I won't say it. I don't want to give away stuff that I talked about over there. But um, I, again, it's, it's easy to do a lot of this stuff. And you create it once and it's passive income for the rest of your life. You create a bunch of... I know I know somebody who... who um, he manually typed them back before they had page scanner, OCR page scanners and stuff. And he would manually type in books and then do an ebook on public domain books of his own on Amazon. And he sold thousands of... This was years ago too, 10, 12 years ago or better. And uh, he's made money on it ever since. So good cover, good keywords, off you go. Uh, so it's been, it's been a it's been a wild ride these last two years for us. Well, well, thank you very kindly, Andrew. I definitely recognized instantly your avatar on there, even if I didn't see the name. Appreciate all your help. I had a good day today, so I'm sure. Well, thank you very kindly for the 4.99 super chat, Andrew. Very much appreciated. Not necessarily, uh, not necessarily, but greatly appreciated here as well. We actually had a pretty darn good day. I can't really complain too much, um, other than I never feel like I get enough up. Uh, I did item specifics today myself. Uh, wife and family have been listing today. I think she's got 126 cards up as of right this minute. She'll probably be listing for two more hours. Um, I did 226 one-by-one one item specifics. I'm knocking out every single item specific. 
I'm knocking that totally out of my, I hate seeing them up there. It does seem to help. It does create action on your account. I ran into a glitch. Let's shoot out a glitch here that I wanted curious if anybody else had the same glitch. Um, I tried to alter the prices on uh, 500 items at a time. I think it was 2,000. I think they upped it. It wouldn't allow me to do that. So I dropped it down to a lesser quantity. Wouldn't allow me to do it. So I don't, I don't know if they've temporarily having a glitch where you can't raise the price in bulk on listings. I was, I was very frustrated because that's what I was set to do. I had it listed on my calendar for, for today, but it wouldn't allow me to do it. I tried everything. And I didn't call eBay because usually by the time you call them, and even if you do call them, they don't know anything about it. They'll put it on a list and you'll never hear another word back for them. All it does is waste 25 minutes of my day dealing with it. So I don't, I don't even bother calling eBay for that. I just either don't do it or work around it or go to another platform and list stuff there um, just to blow out the aggravation. So, um, Kelly, sales are about the same this October, but nothing amazing. Better than nothing, I suppose. Yes, dollar for dollar, I'm actually up from last last October, but I, I can't use those numbers because eBay crashed sales last year after the 12th, as I said, from the 12th to the 28th. So what's that, 16 days worth we lost? It just it like dipped in half for 16 days or so straight. It was very obviously it was caused by the update because that's when we were forced to do all that other crap. And anyway... Hey, Jeff, Mr. Loftus in the house. Hopefully you're doing well there. Hopefully flowers are going well for you. Stardust Memories, welcome. I'll get down there again, Jeff, and I'll definitely hit you up for sure. Uh, Mr. Hale, how you doing, Mr. Hale? Stardust Memories, did you change your avatar? I want to say you had a different avatar. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's another person with Stardust in the beginning, but... I'm looking forward to a good fourth quarter. Yeah, my guess is it's not going to really take off till after Halloween. That would be my personal opinion for the average person. Um, we're list we're 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 going to start listing some uh, more expensive items in the next ten days. So as soon as those start to hit, my sales should uh, skyrocket. They're in demand. Some of the the purchase that five five grand per, purchase. It's we're going to list some of the more expensive cards. I've got some really nice 1880s beer cards that could be four or five a, a piece and i got a whole stack of them i got some really good stuff those in patreon you'll you'll get a preview on some of those on another video um for those in patreon and youtube as well uh there'll be a video up tomorrow to be a, as long as the the first part to that trade card deep dive um as it progresses you'll see some more expensive cards i think the next video has some that run in the 700 hundred dollar range some really awesome just mind-blowing awesome artwork cards that you're going to get to see um, very graphical um, I've already shot more footage so I've got three videos in the can for that so there'll be two more up by Monday at the latest the, the next one's edited the one for Saturday but tomorrow is Marky's birthday so I'm probably not going to be on air or any, anywhere there'll be a video up tomorrow but I probably won't be anywhere in the office at all we're going to spend the day out maybe we'll hit a uh, thrift store just for fun I'm not, I might take a camera I might not I don't know um, but we're going to be out, the wife and I, probably go to dinner or something and that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, and no, I'm not going to tell you how old she is. Marky's my wife, if you didn't know that. You can see her in the Weebles videos that I have up now, if you'd like, or real early uh, live shows here on um, YouTube as well. Um, Ross uh, Heyman, uh, what's the most boring part of eBay for you now? What's the most fun? What's the bo most boring part? You know, I, 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 to be honest, nothing's really boring with eBay to me. Um, I'm, I got OCD and, and fighting between that and ADD or ADHD. I'm, I'm obsessed with things. I'm compulsive. I, I, I can't stop doing something until I finish it. Even if I'm up all night long, um, I'm really not bored with it, honestly. I, I don't get bored. Just like I know people say, well, they're bored with videos or they don't want to do this or whatever the case may be. I don't get bored. I like what I do. I, I honestly do. I'm not just saying that. Um, that's why I'm, I don't, I'm not as active as a lot of the other YouTubers are with comments to everybody and all this. I don't, I don't, I'm mostly, mostly reselling. I don't, I don't get bored with it. I don't get bored with the videos because I like talking about reselling. I don't know if I, if I didn't talk about reselling, if I'd be, I'd probably be bored with it then, but um, I don't have anything really boring. I mean, it's maybe not exciting to most people. It's not as fun as sourcing because um, I don't source like I used to. I don't. I don't. 
it, it basically comes to me it's a phone call away these days anything almost these days um i i, I honestly i'm not trying to to skate that question but i can't think of anything that's honestly boring or or i like it i mean i'm i'm selling what i like i pass up stuff all the time just because i'm not interested in messing with it print ads for example nothing wrong with print ads and i've sold some for, for hundreds of dollars in the past too um <clears throat> i just i don't feel like having to cut up stuff and then i'd have to i can't duplex scan it and it, it's a larger item if i'm doing like i used i, I did a lot with saturday evening posts and large full-size magazines like that because that's usually where i'd get the better money world war ii ones i do very well with you know patriotic ones and military war efforts and v, v v for victory all that kind of stuff always does well for us i love print ads don't get me i love the artwork i mean i really do i really love that artwork i love old posters i got books just on it um but it, it's more time consuming for me um i just i like what i i like it I, I i can't tell you anything that's that's really boring i don't even mind i know sometimes they'll sit there and take a thousand photos we've got a stand i got a little hand clip it, it doesn't take as long as you think i can do a thousand photos in, in, in two hours maybe or less or something like that i don't know it's been a while since i timed it but i don't get, even get bored with that i got I have my headphones on or i've got the 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 music blaring and i'm listening to you know um natural one by folk implosion that's what i was listening to just before the show love that song um and i'm just jamming out it, i feel i feel totally at ease whatever i'm doing because i've got the freedom to uh, i don't want to do it right now i can go upstairs walk outside take it to go back down the down the back steps to to the backyard and take the dogs out play with jack or jinx for a little i i, I can i don't get bored i really don't i don't I'm I'm a workaholic, I guess. I love this. I I twelve fourteen hour days, and I don't get bored at it. Um, <clears throat> I'm not saying I don't get frustrated sometimes, but I, I don't get bored at it. The funnest thing is is literally getting to look through a, a huge estate or or um, a big huge possible pick of stuff. I love looking at that stuff. I get excited when I see certain things in a photo somebody sends me. And the whole way there, the whole time, I'm all, what am I going to find? I'm I'm edgy. I'm like, you know, I'm on the edge of my seat just waiting to get there. I don't speed either, but I I'm, 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 I just can't wait to get there. I, I drove out. I was in Detroit the other day, and um, <clears throat> I was excited to get out there. When we went to go get all the, the, the five grand in that purchase there, I was really excited. I wasn't worried about the money. I didn't think about any of that stuff. I was excited about what I'm going to get to see. Because for me, the stuff that I sell, it's historical, it's neat. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I'd go to a museum and see it if, if I didn't buy it or sell it, you know, stuff like that. So the whole whole business is for me. I just wished I would have went full-time year, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. I wouldn't have been in, I wouldn't have suffered. My kids would have had a better life. Than me and the wife would have had a better life. And I'd have had money and not worked 60 hours as a regional or a general manager, and most of the efforts go to somebody else. That's just my take on it. If you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. I got 148 people in-house and 53 thumbs up. Show some love for the channel, please. Um, hopefully the answer that I was long about, but that's the answer there, Ross. Don writes, sales are picking up since I put more than half my Etsy shop on 40% discount. Yeah, I, I said this last week, and I did go th and follow through. Um, the sales I started running as of this morning, I did sales too this morning. I even drove out to um, where my son works earlier. Um, my son's a engineer for research and development for a solar company. They do solar work here, but it's a big one, one of the biggest ones around. Um, it's the biggest one in the country, I think, now, the factory out there. And they got two more coming. But anyway, it, it's been a real good day. We did put our, our eBay items on 35% off. Again, I got a 3X, so that's only one-third off. So I still got 2X to play with. So, you know, it's no big deal for me. I don't mind doing that. But it creates a, a sense of urgency on the two-day route when we do two-day sales. Um, <clears throat> the only thing is sometimes these these uh, past week or two, I had a lot of stuff going out the other day, well, last two days. And uh, yesterday, or was it the day before? In fact, I'll, I've got a short I shot. It'll be up on Patreon. It's just a real quick short, but you can see some really cool items all shipped to bulk to one person. Um, I should have taken a picture of the box, but I, did, I didn't even think about that. Um, but that'll be up tomorrow morning on top of the regular. That's just an add-on for the Patreon and the um, uh, YouTube membership. Uh, what was I going to say? 
oh um i the post it was it's posters and prints and photos and stuff it was a really nice assortment there but anyway sales wise are, are still i'm fine with sales i'm not going to complain about sales honestly we're we're um well, i'm not going to give you out a number but I'm, I'm happy with the numbers anyway uh this gruntled octopus how are you doing Every time I, we've got our shower curtain is an octopus. It's like a 1920s style, almost an Art Deco, Japanese ink painting kind of. It's real. It's it's a, like a four or five color. It's 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 really neat. It's it's pretty cool. But anyway, if you look on Amazon, you might see. I don't know. Is it still available or not? But um, so I always think of that when I see disgruntled octopus. Um, hang on, my feed just bounced. Where am I on my feed? Uh, here we are. There's the boor there's the boring part right there. Okay, let me pop down. What would it take it to make you a uh, gruntled? Oh, uh, top of the week, Don. Thank you for being there. Well, thank you, Steve and B. Love the little top hat there. I we I actually have one. Um, as of right now, I do plan on doing a Halloween episode. Um, and we'll, we're going to pull out Halloween collectibles and we're going to talk just about Halloween stuff for the Halloween show. Um, I haven't decided on costume wise or what's going to go on for that, but there will be something. Maybe I'll do a giveaway. I don't know yet. Um, it's been a while since I've done something different. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing? Good to see you in house. Definitely. So, um, hang on, let me pop on down here. Antiquarian book Manuel, good evening as well. Guten Tag, good day. Guten Abend, it would be good evening right now. Um, Jackie, I'm new to this, but have thousands of antiques, and I've noticed I'm finally making sales and able to get offers. Let, let me mention, I only have 60 items up so far. Thanks for the amazing bits. Well, thank you very kindly, Jackie. It, everything takes time. I only had one listing the first day I started, obviously. It just takes time. The only difference between me with 100,000 listings total uh, and somebody else is time. There's, there's really not much else different than that. I personally know somebody who's got over 100,000 listings, and he listed every one of them himself in 10 years. Of course, obviously, if he lists 10,000 items a year, he's probably sold who knows, 4,000, 5,000, so probably listing 15,000 items. You can equate that out per month or, or per week, whatever you want to do, but that was his pace. He worked part-time doing something else at the same time, so anything is possible as long as you believe it's possible and you don't let somebody else tell you not to do it or you'll never make it. If I listened to people, I'd never be selling on eBay to begin with. Everybody made fun of us back in the day. I mean, literally, even family members, even... I won't mention who, I almost said who, but uh, even very close family members used to dog on us and make fun of us behind our backs all the time about what we do. And, you know, they can't say much now. Not at all. I mean, we do we do well for ourselves. I don't like the flash out numbers or anything. I think that's personal. I don't care, you know, if somebody shows theirs. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I just, I, that's not me. Um... 97 Deep Valley Road, Stamford. How are you doing? Who this address is? No idea what you're talking about. Guten Tag, Mike. Guten Abend. It's good evening. Uh, the land. Sales seem to have picked up. Thus is my, or this is my first fourth quarter on eBay. This last week or two has been a decent steady ramp up, though. Very good, very good. Again, it comes down to what you're selling. If you have the same items up you had for summer wear and summer sales, you need to switch to winter stuff you know, because they're going to sell far, far easier right now. Dave, Midwest Picker, another YouTuber in house. How are you doing? Yeah, Marty, you know, I probably have 10 hours back and forth on test on video clips that we've messed with for Weebles. Um let's talk about videos for a minute here. I get that question quite often. I mean, a lot. I've had a lot of people hit me up on the other channel, my the art professor and stuff. Um, if I have a 10-minute video on YouTube, I probably have shot 30 minutes worth. 
I don't care what video it is. I'm not, I, I never am a first take person on a lot of stuff. I can ramble on a, on a video about stuff I know extremely well, but on a video where I've got to cut in images and sold items and stuff, it takes a lot longer. If I do a video of like top 10 or 20 or something, that's, that might be an hour and a half worth of recording. And it's, I got to cram it down to 14 minutes or 18 minutes or whatever they end up being. Um, Weebo's videos. I don't make a dime on any of those, and we kept doing them. The only reason, as I said, is is monetary wise, and and you know, obviously, I don't mind doing labor of love at all. And a lot of the labors of love have turned out to make us money. My clown, the killer clowns, my trilobites, the figures, the weebles, all that stuff. I've been selling enough to, you know, three hundred percent profit on on time investment and in in, in uh, investment in cogs. So, I mean, things start to go. My postcards. We did, I did some illustrations of postcards. As I said, I got a Christmas one that's finished. Um, I'm not going to show it out here, but it is finished. I'm still deciding. I had an offer to buy them all already. Somebody who does sh uh, postcard shows has sold my postcards at some of the shows, and they sold out on, on one of the Halloween ones not too long ago. So, that was all, that was all just fun. I started doing postcards of my artwork in 1997. From poison dart frogs. I still have the original artwork, the paintings. There's there's probably a thousand people in, in Florida who own them, the ones that don't even know that I do this. Who knows? They're probably sitting in a scrapbook somewhere or a, f a postcard album from the 90s. They used to be, be sold in shops in Florida back in those days. I worked for a lady by the name of Marsha Mylander too, and I used to do murals and I did the, the McDonald characters on the McDonald's on iDrive in Orlando, Florida. Um, right, Kirkman and iDrive. I did the, the painting in the lobby and the scenery and the murals. I did all the detailed stuff. I did the ones in the lobby that are 20 feet off the ground myself in there, um, among other things in town. But I know I'm rambling. But video-wise, I haven't done as many videos right now, if, if you've noticed. My rep, my the rev I'm getting off of those as well as my views is higher than it was when I was doing more videos, and I that equates to to um, some of the videos I'm getting uh, that I put up a year ago are now getting 4,000 views a day and have been for months. So I guess YouTube's paid off to some extent, and and for me that extra time instead of doing the extra videos has been going into the reselling. We're still to a point where I definitely want to have a store. I've actually reached out to some other resellers, including uh, Dave and Chuck, Million Dollar Peddlers, and a few other ones, um, to have a little network of connected, interconnected sites and things like that, which is in the works. Um, I, I've just had so much stuff that inundates my business, and OCD and ADHD don't help. Um, if I'm going to do the Weebles videos, I said, and we are, because the wife loves them, the wife's going to do some skits, and I'll probably be the one talking about the collectible aspect and we'll intermingle stuff like that is what we're doing. But I want to invest as much effort into doing stuff like that as humanly possible. I try to up the, the quality of videos as best as I can. I know I got used to get made fun of, of the, the green screens and all that kind of stuff. I My environment where I would shoot, it's boring to it would be the same thing i like mixing it up i like the interactiveness i'd love to have worked in the movie so i like all this stuff to me and i think i've got it down fairly good for the the environment but i'm in a tight area and it's 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 almost claustrophobic looking at the screen when i'm doing it so for me it helps out too uh, it helps out with my vision issues and things like that also so i'm investing a lot of time into it and i'll be able to cram when the vi when you see a weebles video done and up that means i probably have two or three ready to go we're, we're shooting them all together it's going to be a series of them you're going to get to see one of the biggest collections and i can say that without hesitations probably within the top five or ten in, in probably the globe the biggest collections of weeble vintage hasbro weebles in existence uh the wife has at this point and I don't know anybody who has a bigger collection. I know a person I've been told has a bigger collection as well as somebody else who may have it. But the wife literally has stuff that's not even in the guides. And uh, Anyway, we got a Weebles guide that we've been working on too, off and on. The wife's been helping with that. But um, I want to invest the proper time and show it as a true item. And I want to 
have a nice video instead of just cranking something out. I wasn't happy with the last Weeble video that in that listing. I got three Weebles videos up. The first two I'm happy with, but I, I would have cut out me as the auctioneer in there because I think that was terrible. I, I, I cringe. I almost edited it and chopped it out and threw something else in there, but still might do that because I hate that segment. But uh, anyway, we figured out what we wanted. We've done some test scenes. Um, I've got blue, green, and red screens we had to use to do the Weebles. I've got some animation in there that you're going to get to see animated Weeble stuff better than anything. And again, it's a, it's a labor of love. I'm not going to make a dime probably on those videos. And if I make anything, it'll just be uh, 10, 15 bucks, 20 bucks maybe. So it's not something that I'm doing for money. I have to put that aside. Money, uh, revenue comes first for us, you know, especially if we're going to be shelling out, you know, six digits in cash at once for a purchase of a place and i don't want to just have nothing in that account so anyway i'm rambling let me move on uh let's see here guten tag is good day tag is day guten is good um cy wilcock i'm praying this fourth quarter is a success uh still recovering from the 12th october of last year as I, as of the 28th of October of last year, and six, it took us 16 days to get back to normal. And then everything was still back up 3% or higher. This summer, we were up 43% in dead, dead, dead uh, peak mid-summer. Uh, right in the, the heart of summer, we were up 43%. That was the, the max we hit. And I'm not the only one. But I, I worked our store that time. We were doing every I, tons more than I was doing now. We've slacked off a little bit, so the sales are a little slower than that. But I'm fine with that. I, I intentionally did that. I wanted a little more time to get some other stuff set up. Because again, I got a lot of stuff going in the background. We've got like, I got a, um, a, a dry marker uh, board, and there's like 20 projects we've been working on. Some of them for, as I said, like the animation for years. One day in the middle of the night, I won't be able to sleep. I'll get up and I'll do two hours of animation or something for it. We've got our own characters. I've got trademark copyrights and all that kind of stuff too. But um, I would say it's more along the lines of like um, demented um, sci-fi 50s, Tim Burton-ish um, animated short is what, it's, what it is. Um... Up at 4 a.m., working study all day, waiting for my wife to get home from a long day so we can go to work together. List, list, list. Well, very good, Land. Um, my wife and I work together very well. I, I hired her when I was a regional. I hired her when I was a, a general manager. I know some people would say that's not, not good, but the company I worked for was good about that, and I never had any lines. You know, I never drew the line if she did something wrong or whatever. She, my wife followed the rules, so I never had any issues, but... We worked together very well. We did at Disney for 10 years on top of it. We're best friends, so I, I have no complaints with that. I don't mind working long hours either. I don't get up at 4 in the morning, but 6 in the morning is a, is a typical Monday through Friday these days. Um, again, I don't have to. I could sleep in every day if I wanted to, but I, the early bird gets the worm. And I, I, I truthfully follow that, that mantra there. Um, this has gotten easy, I should say, for us, at least... The main aspect, getting stuff is easy. Pricing stuff is easy. Um, listing stuff is easy. It's just time consuming. You know, I know if you're new, it's it's just going to take you time. That's the only, Again, the only difference between me and somebody else is the time that I've put in and the length of time that I've been doing this. Once you've done something for 25 years every day of your life or most every day of your life, it, it's I can do it in my sleep. You know, I, 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 I don't look at the keyboard. I can type 65, 70 words a minute these days. I took typing in, in, in high school and I could barely get 55 back then. But now I'm blah, 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 blah. yeah, once in a while I got a typo here and there. But, you know, anyway. Uh, yeah, rambling. Thank you, Kelly. Yep, Kelly got it there too. Guten Abend is good evening. Abend is evening. And that's what I would say, Guten Abend right now. I took four years of German. My family was German. All day coffee. Well, glad to have you in today. Thank you very kindly, too, for the very kind words. Shambles84, why can't you mark the global shipping program items as dispatched? They are marked as, as, as mailed. You, it'll instantly mark on the transportation uh, tracking number from your location to Kentucky or if you by chance have one of the other distribution hubs for eBay. It does show that. 
mine all do and it starts tracking on the day it'll show it had arrived at the track at the shipment facility in in um, kentucky and then it'll say uh processing or international shipping center international uh or transfer to international provider i think is technically maybe what it says something like that um Thank you as well. Again, Jackie, very kind. Old school, new eBay glitch. Can't get discounts applied to multiple listing purchases. Two hours, nothing done. They said, wait, 24 hours, try again. Can't get discounts applied to multiple listing purchases. Well, I wouldn't even mess with that. I wouldn't even call eBay. What I would just do is give a partial refund for those specific ones and be done with it. It's going to be the same thing. If you're giving them a discount, it's just going to crank off part of the money. you know. So if they've already paid. Now, if they haven't paid different story but you could always just tell them to go ahead if you don't mind paying i can just refund you the difference but ebay's glitching and blah 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 that's what i would have probably done just to get it done and as i, I just say i'd like to get it in the mail for you so you're not waiting and blah 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 I just you know put it nicely and and not as not the way i quite said it but you get the gist on it i would say um and I'm assuming you did a like a coupon discount or you're running a sales and markdown or something like that where you buy five and they get 20% off or something would be my guess uh, what you're talking about there. Now, what I saw on, on somebody else who commented on that probably about two months ago or so, um, there was a glitch where even though you assigned it, and it showed it on the item, it wasn't actually added into the listing, and they were unable to do it in that case. I don't know if that's the same thing, but that was months ago, a few months ago, maybe three or four months ago at this point. It's been a while since I even thought about that one. Uh, Justin signed one. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. I don't know what mine would ever be worth ever in the history of it, but um, still pretty sand and dolphins around, less full sand dollars. Yeah, I loved going there. I had an uncle. He lived on um, Alternate 19 in Bradenton. And I, I, the first time I went there, I was maybe eight. And we stayed at his house, and we did all the tour. We went to um, uh, Ringling Brothers. I really liked that because they've got uh, Ruben's collection there. And we got to see Snooty used to be the manatee. And you could actually pet the manatee. It's the first time I saw a manatee. I love that area. That area was really, really nice. Um, sitting on the beach. We used to go to a place called Sandpiper. It's just a dive um, hotel, whatever you want to call it. It was on the beach. It had a patio that overlooked the intercoastal or the, the water out there. And we'd get a bucket of little neck clams. And I loved going out that way, honestly. The wife and I would go out there a lot. It was just a hour drive from Orlando down I-4. And we'd hit down towards uh, Sarasota St. Pete. And we'd hit... Um, uh, we'd do uh, Tarpon Springs. We'd go to uh, uh, Pappas's, a Greek. Back then, it used to be great. We went when we were down in Florida not too long ago, and it wasn't very good, but that was a huge Greek restaurant, one of the best back in the day, back in the 90s, 2000s era. And then we'd go hit the sponge docks and hit the antique stores. There used to be a real nice antique store right on the sponge docks. And the in, in, in the display in the window, they had brass diving helmets. I don't know if it still exists, but they had massive sponges down there. And well, I love that area. We'd go up and down that whole area, all the way up and up, up the coast even, all the way up through Pensacola sometimes and across down the down I-10. I-10 to Mississippi even, honestly, and, and through Texas. Um, Mr. Johnson, Richard Johnson in house, how are you doing? Good to see you in. Yeah, it is going pretty good, Mr. Johnson. I can't complain, honestly. Chantanu, how are you doing? Good to see you in house as well. I don't know if I've seen you on a... Yeah, I think you have been on a live show before. Sometimes my brain doesn't work right, but... Karen Chase and Vintage, how are you doing? Craig Winus, old school. They didn't apply my shipping discount on multiple in-cart buys. Was that what was uh, happening with you? I hate the cart. The cart never works for me. I had to deal with something with the cart the other day where it, it didn't do something too. My, I've, I never recommend the cart at all to anybody. And I know a lot of people live by it and it works great for them. But I've never had it, like if I do a quarter extra per item, if they buy more than one, it doesn't work. And the other problem with the cart is if they have offers. Let's say I sent them an offer to a watcher, five different items, and they happen to have them in their cart. If they close out that purchase with their cart, they don't get the offer price. You have to accept them one by one. So I, I, I hate the cart. 
because usually most everything that I sell is sold through an offer to a watcher or an offer coming in. So you can't use the cart. So if they have in their cart and they use the cart to check out, I always have to refund and do a bunch of crap because it doesn't work right. Now, I don't have immediate payment on anything. And that's how I combine. So if somebody wants a bunch of items, they usually hey say, hey, is there a discount? Would you do this? Would you do that? I'm sure, sure, sure. And I said, just go ahead, buy them. But the minute it hits you to the pay option, just back out. And then go get the rest of the items as soon as you're done buying or you know at least purchasing, not paying for it. Then send me an email or click the, uh, inf uh, what was it, combined shipping uh, request, I think is what it says. And that's how I usually do combined. If, if what happens a lot though lately, because I've got so many items in some categories, people don't know it's me. They're just looking at the items. One hour they'll buy something, and next hour they're still looking and they run across something else and they don't put two and two together and realize it's me, and they'll buy it again, buy something else. So then I usually just combine them by refunding the difference in shipping when I ship it out. I usually keep the 30 cents, uh, 30 cents out of each one when I refund to cover the cost of any fees that may, the 30 cent processing fee or whatever eBay goes back and forth on there. But let's pop on down here. Hang on, my feet's acting up again. Imagine that. Uh, Justin, I've been waiting to buy a house since the start of the pandemic. If the house, the the one we looked at with three acres, right now it was three hundred and seventy thousand. Before the pandemic, it was two thirty. Two years, in just two years, it went up that much. Well, now it's it's dropping down again. So if we have to wait till you know mid. Um, next year, uh, uh, this sounds terrible, but I mean, a recession at this point won't hurt us. And I know the, 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 I don't wish one, I don't want one to happen because there's going to be a ton of people with sales might hurt and stuff, even for us. But overall, I think, think it wouldn't be terrible, terrible, but cause I, I don't, I don't splurge on anything. I can live very minimal these days. I always, we had to, so that's how I would, but, um, it might be down half price at some point. It might be down to what it was or even before, you know, lower than what it was in 2019. You can look up the, the price, the last sale of the, the building. And, and what, what was it? 20% um, of all purchases made in houses were flippers and stuff. Maybe it was even higher than that. I want to say maybe it was even higher than that, which means it was just people making money, trying to make money off of the housing market increases just since the pandemic. Well, they're in trouble now, a lot of them. There's been articles left and right because they'd have to take out a loan on those houses. And if the market dries up and dies, that means that one out of five houses, those people may be you know, not able to play, uh, pay in default on those. They get turned over to the bank, anything left over. you Anyway, there'll be a opportunity. If you've got the cash to at least put down a good chunk of change, 60%, 70%, even just pay it off, it's going to help you at least because you won't be worrying about the mortgage rate. I'm not, I don't care what the mortgage rate goes to. That's not, the, the house prices will drop enough where, you know, it won't matter at that point. To me, anyway. And we would never do a 30-year in the first place. I wouldn't do a, a fixed nor a, a adjustable. We'd be, be looking, if we even took a one out, would be a, a five years all I'd want to do. Um, I've already calculated and all that kind of stuff and figured it all out. But anyway. Uh, 344 in Oklahoma. I'm assume, assuming Karen's giving us the gas price. That's not bad. It was it right it, it it was 3.99 and then I had like 70 or 80 cents in Kroger's. Kroger's you get 10 cents off a gallon and I went to the to the Kroger's gas station too. I think. Um, weekend sales are down bigly, but my, my midweek sales are up significantly. Uh, see, I don't worry about a few days here or a few days there. We're running into the last few, at least up here up north, into the last few weekends where the weather's nice enough that where you'll be outside. So it, it's expected, and it 2019 and before, there was a couple weekends where it was really slow, and that's what's going on. The week of Halloween, it'll be slow, would be my opinion, too. It has been for years. Again, even last year, it was even slower, but we've got the, the update that killed people's sales on the 12th, so anyway... Hello from Texas, Tammy's Hangout. Been through Texas quite a few times. Worked in Dallas for seven weeks, eight weeks. Uh, Step Mo, how are you doing? Bakersfield. I've been out that way too. We were out, um, Our the company I worked for, Einstein Brothers, had a big factory in Whittier, and I flew out there quite a few different times. 
um, for one one activity or another. So we tr drove around and I checked out stuff. I got to L.A. and did Hollywood a little bit. I'm not a big fan on all that kind of. I don't like all the congestion. I'd rather be out in the country any day of the week, honestly. Neil Troiano. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. I watched one of your videos on USN Silverware. I picked up a bunch cheap and made good money on them. Well, congrats. Very good to hear. Um, in fact, I, I have four spoons we just picked up here, and they're 1870s. Real nice ones, two 1870s versions. So um, Indian War era. Very good. Get very good fun. And I paid 50 cents a piece for them. Since they're early, they're off the officer's mess. It has the shell, seashells with the scrolls. So I think I showed a couple of those in that video, too. Um, I'll probably get 28 to 34 bucks a piece out of them, and I paid 50 cents a piece for them. So there's 300, well, what would that be? $120 worth profit buys on those then. Um, where are we at? Matt J, Cairo Reminder. Yeah, hit the like button. I'm terrible about saying that. I've got 172 people in house on my end, 86 likes. If you can thumb that, uh, slam that thumbs up there, that'd be awesome. Show some love for the channel, please. Uh, let me see where we at. Old school. I had uh, I had to send an invoice for multiple listings that won't apply discounts for the buyer offered by me, huh? Yeah, I mean about the best you can do if they've already paid. Well, obviously they wouldn't pay if you're trying to get the invoice, but is to have them pay and then just refund them the difference would be the only thing I could say. Eventually get rid of the cobra chicken. Did you hear about uh, PayPal's new terms of service? They wanted to fine account holders twenty five if they caught them spreading misinformation or hate speech. On uh, they came out and said that was a mistake. Um, eBay's had like fifty of those types of mistakes. I didn't even see it in honesty because I don't even read most of what the, those type of things post out there. I don't post anything to worry about. I don't post hate or misinformation. Um, everything I could pretty much back up with, you know, clinical, you know, uh, actual scientific tests with a baseline too. So, you know, I didn't even see it. I don't do hate speech. I don't do, I try not to do anything politically incorrect or anything else like that. It's, you got a reputation and I would never risk it, but they, I know they came out. I did see it in the news after the fact. I think it just happened though. Maybe I just missed it by a day or something, but yeah, I'm not. I like I like PayPal. I always have. PayPal saved us when somebody stole our credit card number a couple of times, twice. Somebody used it in California. They instantly caught it, got the money back to my account before I even had a chance to call. And uh, they've only they shut me down once for a temporary and held our money. And uh, I talked to them, and five minutes later it was back up. And it was over uh, a one word I used in a purchase that we made. I purchased some. There were some buttons from Iran. I, I've talked about this before, but it was. It was um, they were British buttons. It was it was when it was uh, you know British uh, England produced them, made them. I could date them. I could prove without a shadow of a doubt it had nothing to do with the the, the current government. Anyway, it was long story short because that was on the the a government list. And that's why. So I didn't blame them for that too. They're they're required when payments are made. And I I talked. It was very nice. I talked to somebody and actually on the phone over that. They called me. Believe it or not, eBay wouldn't have done that, but they did. Very, very, very nice. Handled it very professionally. And they did it very, very quickly, too. I think I found out that they locked it, and then I called them. It was like an hour it probably happened, or two hours maybe at best. And then I had called them, and then five minutes later it was already done. They just wanted proof, so I, I don't even know if I even had to send them a picture or anything. I think they just took my word on what I said they were, if I remember right. Yeah, I, 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 all I had to do was... Show I, I, I always t if I buy something from an individual like locally even sometimes we'll do PayPal back and forth and stuff like that we worry about the 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 fees and stuff later sometimes but sometimes their funds are in PayPal so vice versa and I just do it that way it's easier and um, I always put information on what I'm purchasing I mean to the T everything and that way it's also an invoice for me and you know they can use it as an invoice and because I don't I would never try to uh, circumnavigate taxes or anything else like that so at least if i i try to put stuff through obviously like paypal or something because I, I it's easy for me to to account for it for accounting purposes too i don't like to do much in cash deals honestly because i don't ever want any uh, trying to explain or going over receipts obviously i end up buying some but i, I try to do as little as possible ralph funk the the sync with hip 
if you sell your items on eBay, they'll be removed from HIP in less than like five minutes or less. The quantity will drop off. It'll show up in your ended listings there. If they sell on HIP, though, you just have to zero them out on eBay. And with, with um, I sell less on HIP, so it's not a huge ordeal to take off a couple a day. It's the only site I, I have to deal with that with. And you can also down, they've got a little thing, you can click the download and, and download a list of the ones you do if you do it once a week on there. You might be risking double selling, but, you know, worst case scenario. So whenever, we, I check HIP every day because on average, sometimes we do sell a couple each day of the week on HIP. So it's a couple a day at best. It takes four minutes I just go to eBay. I, I cut and paste as I'm pulling the item out. I open up the hip hip sold my my tab of the item. I pull out the item and I just cut and paste the title into my item search. And then I just hit the quantity button on the hub under listings, and I can instantly just change it to a zero quantity. And obviously, since I have zero quantity options set on eBay, it'll still be active. So if for some reason the sale doesn't go through, all I got to do is change it back to one, and it's still there. I didn't lose any watchers. I didn't lose anything in that listing. Um, so that's how I do those, those sorts of things. I just instantly change the quantity to zero. And then I leave it until I go around and do end and sell similar. When I do end and sell similar, any zero quantities will be shown up differently um, on there. And then I can just zero those out or get rid of them if they've been sold. And I don't have to worry about a return or anything else like that. Um, we're going to end it in just a few minutes here. I know I've rambled on and off here. Um... That did happen, though, uh, Don, on that. So he is being honest with what they said, and that was in there. I did read, read somebody had posted an image of it, but they've already rescinded it like this. As soon as somebody told them, it was totally a mistake. I don't know how it got in there then, though, but either way. Yeah, Karen, that's not, it, they, they rescinded it, so I wouldn't worry about it. Just looked it up. Apparently the message was sent out in air, and they won't be, finding people yeah they won't find, there's nothing's going to be done to anybody from what i saw yeah busy girl that was again on, on my community tab on here i have a link to the their local this is their local one it's not like a national news or anything so you get to see them the lawyer that they have i think knows the broadcaster and they've talked over other cases before um so you get to see it ida and her husband on there too um Yeah, it was written in there. Old school is right, but they well, they say it was a mistake. Who knows? They might have just paid, or who, it might be a cut and paste job, and they put something in the wrong spot, or maybe it was a t who knows. I don't know. They rescinded it immediately. I couldn't imagine them thinking they, they could get away with it, so that's why I wonder. Yeah, I heard their stocks went down even too on PayPal. But again, I don't worry about any of that stuff. I just, it, I, I do fine with PayPal, so why would I worry? I, we sell through PayPal even. It's free to drop links. Uh, yeah, Stardust Memories. That, that what, what Ida and David are talking about in there, it's a little sliver of what they had to go through for weeks of their life until they, they were, the FBI got involved and Anyway, I, I couldn't imagine. My wife's been harassed at work before, and I remember, and it was a security guard at Disney, believe it or not, and their boss like was covering for it. it was a it was a fiasco. I mean, I had to. She was harassed and by by a guy there by a security guard who locked her in booths. I mean, it was it was to the point where he could have went to jail for stalking and all this stuff. I've dealt with stuff like that where we were terrified. We got followed. It was. It was bad, I know. And at the same time, Ida was dealing with, we got death threats then, people wishing our kids were killed and hit by cars and things like that, too. Just over a video I did that she featured in one of her articles. I didn't even know her then. I had nothing. I had no interactions with her at that point. Just showed up on there one day, which I don't mind. Um, but um, So I don't know. Maybe even eBay was involved in that. I don't know, but... Um, Yeah, I don't know if they wanted to. I don't. I don't know. I'm not going to jump to that yet, but maybe it's possible. I, I there's no. I don't have enough evidence to put it either way. Uh, Stepmo, it's my ten months in eBay and have seven hundred items, top rated plus. But I don't know if I'm doing good. I just follow what you said. I, I don't have every answer. It depends on what you sell. So I mean, my word isn't gold for everybody. I can tell you, like, end and sell similar works for like eighty some odd percent of the people that I talk to. Uh, there's 15% or so that it just doesn't work for. 
depends on what you sell. That's one of the biggest things I, I would say that's been very helpful for most people. Um, and I don't just do end and sell similar. The minute I finish ending and selling similar, I instantly go right back over to my sales and markdown and start a sales and markdown on about 92% of our store. And it, I, as soon as that ends, I start it all back over again. So there's almost always a sale going. There might be an hour gap when nothing's running. Um, and I go from there. When I don't have a sales markdown and I'm not running end and sell similar, my sales drop drastically. You can instantly tell I'm not, I forgot to do something. It's, it's very obvious. So um, again, I, I could probably lower prices and do this and do that and all kinds of other stuff. Um, but I don't mind a 3X and I don't mind the long tail passive income aspect of it either. If I didn't have quantity, I couldn't do this. It wouldn't work for me. So for those of you who have don't have quantity, it, my my model may not work for you. It may not be the best for you. But what I would recommend and what we did is we started off with like 95% of everything we would list was quick turnaround. 5% was long tail. As we got better at stuff, we got more merchandise, we were making more money, it dropped down to 80% was, uh, was quick flip and 20% was long tail. And we kept lowering the quick flip down and down and down and down. Um, and then we, boom, we found uh, direct sourcing for buying in bulk. And then none of that mattered anymore. So everything went away and uh, it, our life got so much easier. I'm sitting on a couple hundred thousand listings in just paper, f hundreds of thousands of listings in records and music related items hundreds of thousands of listings and buttons and things like that that we haven't listed, just sitting in inventory. Um, I, I, I probably wouldn't have to buy for the rest of my life. I, I Honestly, it, it's it's close. It's really close, depending on how long I live, of course. But um, again, it all just takes time. Uh, let's step on down. If you're selling items, then you're doing good. It's best to not get wrapped up in what other people are doing. Once you focus on your own store, you will see success. Uh, that's true, Kelly. There's some things that work for most people. That is that is a fact for, for a lot of things. Um, like perceived value, running sales, uh, pricing structure like $10.99 versus $11, $9.99 versus $10. All that stuff are, are factual that work for like almost anybody on the planet. And and it's not, this isn't stuff that I created. This is something that multi-million dollar companies have spent millions of dollars running studies. There's scientific studies on this, on psycho or, uh, psychological effects, on sales. They're, they're, these are literally scientific ones run by PhD students and things like that on these aspects. And that's what I use for for the structure of our business. I run my business like a, a brick and mortar, like places I worked for. You know, as a regional or as a general manager, that's how I run my business. I run it like a real full-fledged business. I could care less what the business is. I run it the same way. I use the same type of forms. I, I use the same type of, of tracking pages, uh, Excel, and all that kind of stuff here, too. Um, there are some given, and the, obviously you have to know what you're selling. You have to know some of the items and things like that, too. But everything I say won't work for everybody, obviously, and that goes for any other channel out there. Um, some channels have just terrible information that are, that's just not true um, that can easily be you know pushed back there so I know there's some haters that always if I say this or say that but um, I just give it to you what I see what works for me if you don't sell vintage and collectibles a lot of what I say may not work for you um, I used to sell clothing and I, I, I played around with that a lot but I make so much more money I, I honestly I make like double in you know, hand to God, I make like double now than what I used to make doing clothing in households. I don't have any competition, especially locally, you know, especially for most of what we get. I, I, I The competition is the biggest factor that I, I killed. I, I got rid of it. I don't have Vero's anymore. I haven't had a Vero or anything for a very long time. There's very few you can get in collectibles. Richard Pryor's estate is one of them, but there's very few you can get in collectibles. They don't make them anywhere. A lot of the things I sell, the, the people who made them have been dead for 100 years or more. So there, there's no there's no way. And a lot of the items I sell, a vast majority, like 70% 70, 70 are probably in the public domain. So no one could go after me in the first place. Um, the biggest factor with your business, whatever you're selling, is to limit 
your risk factors, risk management, manage your risk so your business is as safe as possible, you make the most money possible. But Kelly's right, if, if you're not working your store, and I, I'm talking about working it, really knowing your numbers, knowing what's going on, that's what's going to do you the best working a store. What do I do when I'm working a store? We'll wind it off of this, but for working a store, especially right now, I answer every message that comes in that's that's eBay related. If somebody sends me one from not about Auction Professor, chances are it's not answered because this is our business and I don't bother people at their business and same thing. I don't expect everybody to, to hit me up on, on eBay. And 90%, 95% of the time, I'm not the one answering the emails at all. So it might not even be the wife. It might not even be a family member. So um, the, the folks who are typing all this stuff up to, to, to my eBay page, we don't really respond to anything unless it's related to items. I don't, I, don't, I, I, I don't think that's appropriate to cross the borders in my personal. I don't mind a, a brief message or someone I know saying, hey, you know, especially if I've seen your store and we've talked and stuff. That's a different story. I don't mind friends like that. Some patrons, you know, I've talked to once a blue moon that way. But as a general rule, I don't do anything like that um with ebay but uh with with um your own store i work everything i do all that i'm all day long we send out offers to watchers all day long and if you don't send them out and you wait till like later on in the day a, a, a potential buyer is only able to get so many offers to watchers in a certain time span so if you wait and another he's watching items from somebody else and they sent them out offers to watchers ahead of time you're not going to be able to send an offer to a watcher to that person. So sometimes it might say four offers available. You can send out four. And at the end of the day, when you send it out, it might say uh, two, two people got it instead of the four. Well, you may have waited too long. They may have gotten offers from somebody else. And I know it works that way because I personally talk to eBay one-on-one -on -one about that. And the, the point of it is, and I fully understand and I fully agree with what they're doing with that, I wouldn't want to be flooded with a whole bunch of offers from all kinds all the time. So there's a limited amount that a person will get. So speed is a necessity when you get the opportunity to send one out. 20 times a day, somebody here is probably sending one out. Maybe not the same person, but if there's five, 10, even two or three, we're going to send them out immediately. So a large chunk of what we sell are based on offers to watchers or offers to us. So those are handled immediately. Even if somebody's sending an, us an offer, I try to address it right away because some of those items, there might be other copies. Somebody else may be selling the same items. I want to get it before they see the other item or before there's a chance they might change their mind or some other seller has something different and they want to get a couple of things. Who knows? So everything you do should be an urgent thing to do. So urgently it's urgent to answer emails it's urgent to um address uh you know anything going on if there's a return anything like that needs to be addressed immediately nothing should wait more than an hour or so in my opinion during business operation hours that's just my take on it i were i do all that we will raise prices by a dollar sometimes in bulk on a bunch of items we might lower them the next week we might raise them five dollars a whole bunch of items in bulk um, uh, I sit there and I'll check titles. We'll rescan things that we used to take photos of. So if I used to take a photo, chances are they're going to be swapped out with a scan. Um, I run. Uh, sometimes we'll liquidate some of the older items that have been up for five or six years. But this is stuff I do all the time on a daily basis. All of that is action. We list stuff every day. Um, again, we're constantly moving stuff every two days. I've got sales starting and ending. Um, every two days we're probably running a few maybe end and sell similars. Uh, some days I might do 10,000 end and sell similars all at once to, to group it and slam the system with them. Um, but that's constant. Every day of the week somebody is doing these aspects on the site. Every day. Every single day. Action on your account is incredibly important. You know, if you've got stuff moving on your site, stuff around your, in your store coming and going constantly, you're listing new stuff, even if it's 10, 15 a day, um, every day of the week, that all adds up by the end of the week, you know, so those are all things that you need to do all that. And, and again, knowing your store, if, if something's been up for a year and it hasn't sold, go back and research the price again, go back and double check and see, maybe you've missing a word in the, in the title, a good keyword that will get it done. And I always use the, the description or the, the, the word pug, pug dog. Somebody, this has happened know, half a dozen times. Somebody had something up with the pug dog in it and they just put cute dog. They didn't know the type of dog or they didn't think to put pug in the title. The minute I say, hey, go put pug in the title, the items are selling, they get action, they get movement, they get offers. Now, it's not because I've got some magic powers, just because 
they missed an important keyword on there. We had a mug up, and I've, I've talked about this. I had a mug up, and I didn't know what kind of dog it was. I had no clue. I couldn't Google it because it was a paint, you know, like a printed image versus a real dog. And um, somebody emailed me and said, hey, this is this kind of dog. We have one. I know. It's a cute dog. I already got the mug, blah, blah, blah. And they said, if you put that in the title, I can guarantee it will sell right away. And I'm like, yeah. I looked up it to make sure that they were they, they had the, the right dog breed. And sure enough, that's what it was. I added it into the title two minutes later. I thanked him. Hey, thank you very kindly. I really honestly and sincerely appreciate it. We were, we were racking our heads, our brains, pulling out our hair, trying to figure out what kind of dog it was. The next day, I had an offer, and we sold it for like 34 bucks. It was a 50-cent purchase. I don't know how long ago. That had been sitting here forever. I don't think we originally listed it because I didn't know the type of dog, but that's a perfect example. Everybody misses some keyword. If I don't know something about that or I'm not into that item, I may not know that the most important aspect isn't in the title. It's not an item, item specific, so it's not going to do a potential buyer any good because they're not going to see it because they don't know. You don't have that word in there. Sometimes that's all it, it takes. Sometimes, let's say you're listing a sheet. Here's a good one. I get a lot of people saying, well, I don't do very well on sheet musics. Well, are you listing, list, uh, uh, adding the composer into the title? Sometimes the composer is why it's, it's worth something. The lyricist, the person who wrote the lyrics, are you putting that in there? Sometimes the, the lyricist is like Gus Kahn or something like that. There's some people that their name is collected. So the proper keywords are essential. Are you putting a date? Sometimes a date is important. I, I just sold an 1860 sheet music the other day for like 34 bucks. The date was key. The person who bought it is a Civil War collector. I think it was 1861. Maybe I'll, I'll throw it in a, a post a video or a, a photo of it just in a couple of the membership posters. But uh, the, the point being that all that helped to tie it in. If I just put the title of the, the song, nobody might even have known it. Nobody might have even been looking for it. But as a Civil War era sheet music, different story. So if you didn't put two and two together, you just put a song name and maybe the 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 single writer, like the the, the writer and not the composer, you might be missing something. Sometimes like a sheet music, and I'm just using this for an example. Sometimes the artwork on the cover is what's important, and the artist who did it, its name has to be in the title, and that will sell it very quickly. There's a postcard, and I've talked about West Virginia. Somebody asked me, and I actually told him the other day on my Patreon, but there's a postcard uh, maker from West Virginia. And that name, just putting in the title, will get you. It could get you a couple hundred bucks. There's, I've told everybody in my Patreon group knows that one, and and the same with. Um, well, I don't know if I've got it in my YouTube membership one yet, but the the folks that have found it because I said, hey, you better look out for this. The last person who found one of those cards sold for three hundred fifty three bucks, just because of that name, and they would have never known if they, about that. They had the card in their collection. When, when we first figured this one out, I went through every I went through hundreds of thousands of postcards in our collection. I pulled out three of those cards. It was a long, drawn-out process, but that was a thousand plus dollars worth of three postcards for over a thousand bucks. So, anyway, one single word, one single name, is all it takes sometimes to to make some big bucks on something. And if if you don't have that one name, that one keyword, you may not make the sale. So I if if something's been up for a while, I go back and research it again. If the item's been up for a couple of years and I get an offer on it, I'm going to go ahead and, and do a quick you know, comp search and see. Maybe the price went up. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's something else going on. Maybe 200 of these same items, it was rare when I put it up, and now 200 people have got the exact same thing, exact same item up, and the price crashed. So all these are factors that you got to routinely go back. So you got to, there's maintenance that's required on your store constantly. You can't just put it up and forget about everything. I mean, I, I forget about the items, but there's always bulk things I can do to, to tweak the system or you know, up, up 500 listings by a dollar, up them $2 or $5, lower them the next week or the next month by the same amount. Do them by categories only, so you're not going to be mixing up which ones you raised or lowered. That's, that's what I always would say. But I'm going to let it go on there. I'm at my mark right now. I try not to go too long, but selling items and keeping the bills paid ryan that's a good thing very very good i i know it took us three years to to get enough income where we weren't having to worry about selling something to make a bill and uh, again i'm i don't i can live with almost nothing if i have to but it wasn't pleasant it was well worth the effort uh, one more last last thing here the drive if i didn't have a drive that would have gotten to me and I would have probably just given up. 
and and I don't know how many I've, hundreds of people that I that have reached out to me have given up doing reselling that I've talked to just because they couldn't get make it they couldn't figure it out and again I'm, I'm not that's not a criticism not everybody wants to do this it's not for everybody one out of three people are set and are the type that would be uh, f would flourish running their own business I should say the other two out of three they feel more comfortable or may feel more comfortable working for somebody else because it's it's less worry less headache less aggravation in their life i guess for some people which i completely get so and i've i work for people for most of my life so that, again but if, if if you don't have the drive if, if you don't I, we lived on ramen noodles and stuff I, i'm telling you the, the kids ate great and the wife and i you know just got you know b uh, beans and rice and some cheap chicken, you know, a whole chicken that was cut up or something. That's you, you do what you got to do. Um, it'd be like um, um, somebody living on the in their in the warehouse that they work in, or living in the their building that they're created their own business and just to save money and they're they're so they're always there and they're their own security. I mean, I I, I do it all. I don't. I, the drive is is the biggest factor. I don't know how many people would have survived or been able to put up with three years of barely, you know, scrapping by day after day after day to get to somewhere. Too many people give up. Too many people don't have the drive. The big picture was that I knew what I could get out of it at that point. I knew where I could take it. But again, if, if you don't have the drive, uh, I'm OCD, uh, ADHD, and and. I can't stop doing stuff. I'm, it's 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 built into my brain. I can't get rid of it. Even when I want to turn off certain aspects of my brain, I can't do it. I'm stuck with it. It's, it's a curse sometimes, and, and sometimes it's it's great. But um, the, the drive. I, I'm telling you, you got to have some the motive. What you're what you're doing this for. The, the line I always see in my head is um, Russell Crowe in Cinderella Man, and he was doing it for milk. He knew what he was fighting for, and I guess that's one of my... I'm not a big sports fan, don't get me wrong, but between that and Jerry Maguire, those are two good movies with good points and good morality states dressed from a, a sports side. So I really like those two movies. They're on my top list and top 100 movies for sure. But in there, he's, he sees his kids when he knows what he's fighting for, when he's in the arena, and and um, uh, Max Bear is in there with him and stuff. Um the, the person he's supposed to be fighting, too, is Jethro Bodine's dad in real life. But um, anyway, Max Baird Jr. But that's what I think of. I think of the, the tough times we put up with and, and the fact that this is all for the kids. Now they're older. They're adults and stuff. They've got their own, you know, life going on and stuff. But the, the point of it is, though, that that's what pushed me to do it. I, didn't, it, I wasn't going to let my kids suffer. And, and if that meant 14-hour days, I'm fine with that. That's what, a, a, and again, this may sound weird, but I grew up, that's what the man's supposed to do. And my, that's my father taught me. He was very, very good, very good family man. He did whatever it took, ran himself into the grave and died early at 50. But he, he did what it took, what it took to get by. He worked harder than he should have. But, um, you know, he, you've got to have something, I guess. It's almost like I'm fighting for something, fighting for my family, it feels like some days. And back in the day, I should say, not these days, but... Um, you got to have that mentality, that drive, that nothing's going to stop you. No matter what's thrown at you, you're just going to move right past it and keep moving. You're going to figure out how to survive to the next week and the next week, and then pretty soon you're going to realize, hey, look, I'm actually getting by now. That's how it was for me. And, you know, because I've worked for somebody. I had a, a steady paycheck for most of my life, and this isn't it. Or at least it wasn't. Nowadays it is, but, you know. The drive. I, I I know I've said drive. The word drive probably twenty times, but that that's the truth. I I can't. Uh, that's me. This is who I am. I, although I've I've met a lot of people out in public who've recognized or come up to me and said stuff. And this this is me. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, but anyway, I'll let you go. I know I've I've yapped for another five minutes when I said I was done, but do apologize for yapping too much today. I do appreciate everybody coming on. One last time, if you haven't hit that thumbs up, please uh, slam that thumbs up. It does help the channel. So if you enjoy the content, please give me that that thumbs up. Uh, tomorrow, there will be another video up, obviously. I have two. I don't know which one I'm going to put up. I might even toss a coin. I've got weird 80s toys and the top 80s toys. Those two are the two videos that are actually in the can. For me, that's good to have two videos done for YouTube. But I, as again, I already have the videos for um, uh, YouTube membership and Patreon done. I'm not going to do other, anything other than the eBay one or than the YouTube one because they're already uploaded. 
Um, the other ones will be up Saturday for the membership and for Patreon. And it's a 32-minute video that goes up on Patreon and YouTube memberships. It's the second part of the deep dive into trade cards. Third part will be up no later than Monday. So you have an hour and a half deep dive right there. That is a small, for those who have seen that video, that's a small, tiny, 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 tiny uh, amount of new trade cards we just got. If you've ever seen the counter that I show a lot of stuff on the big white counter, I could fill that up probably a foot tall from end to end and still maybe not get all the cards on there that we purchased for five grand. So it's a huge one. There's 20,000 cards we purchased. Good stuff. Nice, decent quality. Most all of them are in great condition. But anyway, I'm going to let you go. I know I'm yapping some more. I appreciate it. Again, thumbs up if you haven't hit that thumbs up, and I'll see you around next week.